Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Bosco, a priest from the 19th century in Italy who dedicated his life to educating and serving poor young children. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest, St. John Bosco, as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. An informant came to David with the report, the children of Israel have transferred their loyalty to Absalom. At this, David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, up, let us take flight, or none of us will escape from Absalom. Leave quickly, lest he hurry and overtake us. Then visit disaster upon us and put the city to the sword. As David went up the Mount of Olives, he wept without ceasing. His head was covered, and he was walking barefoot. All those who were with him also had their heads covered and were weeping as they went. As David was approaching Bahurim, a man named Shimei, the son of Jera, of the same clan as Saul's family, was coming out of the place, cursing as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the king's officers, even though all the soldiers, including the royal guard, were on David's right and on his left. Shimei was saying as he cursed, Away, away, you murderous and wicked man. The Lord has requited you for all the bloodshed in the family of Saul, in whose stead you became king. And the Lord has given over the kingdom to your son Absalom. And now you suffer ruin because you are a murderer. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, please, and lop off his head. But the king replied, What business is it of mine or of yours, sons of Zeruiah, that he curses? Suppose the Lord has told him to curse David. Who then will dare to say, why are you doing this? Then the king said to Abishai and to all his servants, if my own son who came forth from my loins is seeking my life, how much more might this Benjamite do so? Let him alone and let me curse and let him curse for the Lord has told him to. Perhaps the Lord will look upon my affliction and make it up to me with benefits for the curses he is uttering this day. David and his men continued on the road, while Shimei kept abreast of them on the hillside, all the while cursing and throwing stones and dirt as he went. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Lord, rise up and save me. O Lord, how many are my adversaries! Many rise up against me. Many are saying of me, There is no salvation for him in God. Lord, rise up and save me. 
But you, O Lord, are my shield, my glory. You lift up my head. When I call out to the Lord, he answers me from his holy mountain. When I lie down and sleep, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I fear not the myriads of people arrayed against me on every side. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up, and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident to the town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by Legion, sitting there, clothed, and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. They then began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him and all were amazed. The gospel of the Lord. The enemy is so violent. And in our readings today, we have so many examples of what the enemy's violence can look like. I mean, first of all, to back up just to last week, Remember, you know, we were hearing about David again, but remember what David just did, like not too long ago, the violence that incited David to commit the sins we heard about, I think, on Thursday, right? The sexual assault of Bathsheba and then his lying to get her husband murdered on the front lines and then all the other violence that surrounded that. So that's, that's the enemy's violence 
that incited David to do such a thing. It's violence that incites this man, Shimei, to curse David and throw dirt and rocks at him. Like, how violent that is. And then Abishai is like, I'm going to go cut his head off. Okay, well, that, that too is the enemy's violence. We're not going to fight something like this with cutting somebody's head off. Also, Absalom, David's son, wants to kill his dad. It's not from God. It's the enemy's violence, so full of murderous threats. It's violence, too, that the enemy tempts David, I think, to believe in. So here you have this man who's cursing David, and David's like, yeah, I don't know, maybe I should be cursed. So I wonder what's happening in David's mind. Like, I wonder if he's still maybe a little bit stuck on his own sin. I mean, yes, he repented, and thanks be to God. We heard Psalm 51, and we heard, remember the prophet Nathan came to David on Friday and, and you know, encouraged him to repent of his sin. But I wonder if David, as he's walking and all this stuff is happening to him and his son wants to kill him and he's crying, I wonder if in that moment the enemy tempted David to remember his wicked sin and to identify himself with that wicked sin. So I think all of us in the room have experienced that before where we, th- we remember a sin that we've done or something bad that we've chosen to do and we start to maybe identify ourselves with that and we feel the shame that comes from the enemy. How about the violence that we see in the gospel? Violence all over that place. So you've got this possessed man who's violent not so much to another person. I mean, he didn't really do anything to Jesus except run up and then like lay down on the ground in front of him. But he was violent to himself, bruising himself with stones and crying out and breaking chains and shackles and people are trying to bind him, but he's breaking out so much violence. But primarily, this possessed man experienced violence toward himself. The same violence that the enemy incites us sometimes to experience towards ourselves. We can be so hard on ourselves and so violent toward ourselves, especially in our thoughts. And then you have Jesus, who's so tender, not violent at all, but so kind. And the violence even continues into the pigs, like 2,000 pigs running down the thing and off the cliff and into the water. I thought of yesterday's gospel where they wanted to do that to Jesus. They want to take him to the cliff and throw him off the cliff. All this violence inciting the people to do these crazy things. We're called not to be so violent, to recognize the violence of the enemy and to decide against it, to choose rather to be like Jesus, who is more powerful than any violence who's more powerful than any enemy, than any legion, than any demon, no matter how many they are, Jesus is always more powerful. I imagine St. John Bosco dealt with violence himself as he was raising these poor, kind of uneducated street kids. Many of them lived on the street and lived in poverty, and I'm sure were stealing and fighting each other and getting in arguments and fights and stuff. And John Bosco stepped into that as a father, confident of who God is to him. And helped many of these young boys to find civility and to find education and to find the peace that only Jesus can bring. Let's invite Jesus, first of all, in our hearts to cast far from us all experiences of violence, but also to set the whole world free from the violence that comes from the enemy to put us all at peace. Please stand as we offer our petitions to the Lord. for all the members of the church throughout the world, for the grace to resist the spirit of violence that comes from the enemy and to embrace the peace that Jesus came to bring, we pray to the Lord. For all who govern us throughout the world, that the Lord would give to our leaders a spirit of wisdom and courage to make the right decisions for the common good, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick and the suffering and for all who have asked for our prayers, May the Lord draw near to them in their need, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all Catholic school teachers and administrators, for all students of Catholic schools at the beginning of this Catholic Schools Week, that through the intercession of St. John Bosco, they might be filled with a new gratitude for the gift of Catholic education. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Father Tom and the 40 pilgrims who are joining him in the Holy Land today 
that the Lord would bless them abundantly as they experience the footsteps of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions of the Freuwald family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may they soon see the Lord face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, our tender deliverer, hear us as we cry out to you in faith, for you live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the winning of Christ who humbled himself to share in our Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed the Spirit of your drink, pardon me, and accept it all. And may our sacrifice and our soul this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of St. John Bosco, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as in the festival of St. John Bosco, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe and answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe for eternal life. This is the steward, faithful and prudent, whom the Lord set over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time.
us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of St. John Bosco, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.